Tenchu, a video game series that focuses on stealth over action, where the player takes on the role of a 16th century ninja that punishes the corrupt and those that align themselves on the side of evil. Tenchu was one of my favorite franchises as a kid, and I'm happy to say I've been able to introduce the series to a new generation through my let's plays. However, despite being a stealth game where getting spotted just once can wreck your chances at earning the title of Grand Master, the games have some great action focused bosses for you to step out of the shadows and show the world that you don't hide due to cowardice, just convenience. This is my list of my favorite Tenchu 1 through Tenchu 3 bosses. Enjoy! Number 5 Jubei Jubei is the final boss of Tasamaru's story in Tenchu 2. A middle aged, one eyed, master samurai swordsman that dual wields katanas. Although he does not appear much throughout the game, he is more than worthy of being Tasmaru's final opponent, as Jubei has a deep distaste for ninja. Jubei, hello. A mighty samurai dies fighting a mere ninja. It's almost funny. Yes, it would be. Ninja, a hired help who stab from behind. Let's see you fight like a man. Fair enough, but Lord Goda's greatest warrior made a critical mistake of dismissing Tasmaru as a mere ninja. In their battle upon the fire demon, Jubei was struck down by the treacherous Azuma. Maybe if Jubei didn't underestimate Tasmaru, things would have been different. Number 4, Genbu Mission 9. Genbu was one of the four lords of the Burning Dawn. A warrior that made up with heart while he lacked in brains was both an honorable and brave ninja. He fought alongside Lady Kagami because she was the only one to show him the respect he deserved and wanted to live in a world where all ninja are treated equally. As a Yame, you meet Genbu a number of times throughout the game, but despite being the enemy, I couldn't help but feel bad upon killing him in Mission 9. I wasn't a big fan of the comedy he brought to the game as I would rather my Tenchu be completely dark and serious, but even the ill-placed comedy couldn't stop him from being on this list. It's the interactions with Ayame that puts him here. If things were different, maybe they could have been friends. But fate had different plans for him. Goodbye, Genbu the Wise, Lord of the Burning Dawn. Number 3, Tasmaru Mission 8. Dead for 11 years, Tasmaru is resurrected by Tenrai to serve and help him gain power over Japan. Sadly for Tenrai, the ex Izuma ninja leader isn't easily controlled. During Rikimaru's 8th mission, Tasmaru faces him in a boss battle that shows even a decade dead has a matter stalemate. The reason this fight is third on my list is simply because of Tasmaru's moves. Goodbye! Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! No! What the fuck he did? What the fuck was that? He just gave me some kind of super pile driver! These attacks are not only fast but powerful, flashy and all round shocking. It is truly depressing that he wasn't playable with all these new attacks in the story mode. Instead we have to settle for Teshu. At least Tasmaru and one of his combos are available in Wrath of Heavens vs mode. Pick it up Daniel, pick it up! Oh and you're done, you're done. Do you want to pick it up again? No I do not. Oh, I think only Kage does though. Oh look at that! That was a cheating, cheating, No, cheating. no, 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 I think I have full health too. Number 2, Lady Kagami Mission 10. The leader of the Burning Dawn, Lady Kagami dreamed of a world where she and her fellow ninja weren't simply expendable slaves to the rich and powerful. She amassed an army to take down Lord Goda and rebuild his fallen empire as her own. She had everything, the skill, power, determination and brains to bring her fantasies to life. Sadly, Ricky Maru disagreed with her brutal ways of achieving it and had to put a stop to her before any more innocent lives were lost. Her boss fight is second only to Lord Meho when it comes to intensity. With a sword that keeps you at a distance and a habit of smacking me with her fan, I always find myself having a difficult time against Toda's former master ninja. Only a fool follows the rules without questioning them. And fools can never stop us. Ugh! I'll happily suffer the title of fool if it means I can save even one life from your blood-drenched dream. Farewell, Kagami. Number 1, Onikage Mission 10. Onikage was clearly going to be my number one. He is the main villain of the series and easily has the most fun boss fights throughout the games. But it is here in Mission 10 of Tenchu 1 that Onikage really earns his spot. For you must make your way through the first half of the mission before reaching him, 
and when you do there's still a chance that it won't be a one on one battle. See Tenchu 1 was rather different compared to most games including the rest of the series in that when you fight a boss most of the time you can simply turn around and leave the boss room. However that also means that guards can enter said boss room making for some fun or difficult moments in this title. I can't tell you the number of times I made it to Onikage just to get kicked out the door and have 4 zombie warriors come racing towards me. Not only that but Onikage isn't the final boss but midway boss. Once you defeat him you enter the caves and find your way down to Lord Meho, someone of whom is cheap and will probably easily murder you the first few times you face him and every time you die you have to replay the mission from start. Meaning I have faced Onikage in this mission many times so he's ingrained in my memory for better or worse. I also give points to this fight as the only time Onikage was truly killed. He was later brought back to life by Tenrai but Rikimaru did indeed manage to kill him here so points for that milestone. I will see you in hell. Okay that was my top 5 favorite Tenchu boss list. Thank you for watching, if you agree or disagree feel free to leave a comment or video response and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Goodbye!